hello it's lami cooks welcome back to my kitchen today we'll be preparing kosi or akara in nigeria as they call it this recipe is long overdue i've had several requests and i decided to do it today if you want to know how i did this yummy delicious goodness please stay tuned are you subscribed to this channel if you are not please do so and do not forget to hit on the notification bell so that you'll be notified anytime I upload a video. Let's head over to the kitchen so we can all prepare this together. I will list the ingredients in the description box below. So I have here two cups of black eye beans, one medium sized onion, chili pepper red chili peppers some salt to taste and two eggs which is optional so to start off i will soak off my beans for about an hour and two to two, two hours after two hours the skin has begun to loosen up so I'm going to show you one quick method of removing the, the skin. So in the blender, you put your beans with a lot of water and then using the pulse button, just pulse it a few times until you see that the, the skin is coming off. So let's repeat the process for the rest of the beans now. I usually love using the color bash because I find that it removes the skin better i don't know this is just <laughs> what i feel because I, probably that's what i've seen my mom do all the time so i just love doing that so pour some water on then strain it using the strainer and you can see all the skin coming off even before you start washing it properly now for saving water, I want to reuse the water so I used a bowl underneath my strainer so I can save the water and reuse it. Same method, using the water, the same water again, pour it back in, squeeze, squeeze, strain it. You can see the skin coming off gradually. Repeat the same process. You want to remove all the skin and the, the black eyes in the beans. That's what you want to achieve. Now, after the water is clear, you use two hands to squeeze and try and remove all the eyes and the remaining peels from the beans or the skin. As you can see, I'm trying to pick through the hard ones that couldn't got broken up by the blender. I'm using my hands to just squeeze them so I can get all of them removed. Back again to the same technique. Strain, strain. You can see the beans is becoming clearer and clearer as we move on. The skin is removing gradually. You would want to repeat this process and method until all the skin and the eye, the black bits, are all off. It can be very challenging or it takes quite some time, but if you use the blender, it helps it even quicker. You use two hands, squeeze it to make sure everything is well peeled. Repeat again until it's all cleared. You can see how almost clear it is. So after doing it a few times, my beans are all cleaned. You can't see even the peel or the black bits. I saw one. Strain it. And then it's time to blend. It's all cleaned. I added my red chili and my onions. The red chili is there to give it the heat and then the color as well. I'm using my Nutribullet because I find that 
uses less water because you want to avoid putting too much water in your kosi. Just a little bit of water to start off the blending process and you're fine. Do not blend it too watery. Otherwise you have problems when you're frying. Make sure you blend it until it's silky smooth. It's all blended properly. You repeat the same for the rest of the beans. Making sure I'm scraping everything off. <laughs> I'm not leaving anything. No wasting, huh? No wasting. Because I blended it separately, trying to mix everything so it's properly and well mixed together. Now, before frying, you want to whisk your akara or kosi just to get that fluffiness. So I'll beat it a bit. If you have a whisk, you can use. Back home, we used to do it with the hand, but I'm using the spoon and it's fine. Whisk it for about two to three minutes. Then add your salt and one egg. I'm using one egg because I divided the butter into two. So this is half of the butter. After whisking, make sure you have your oil ready, which is hot already. So I'll start deep frying my kose. Now, kose is deep fried. So if you're somebody who is concerned about deep fried food, um, just indulge yourself once in a while. It's fine. <laughs> So make sure you do not overcrowd your pan. And once you see the sides starting to brown, you can flip it over. Have you seen how puffy that looks? That's the effect of whisking it and then adding the eggs. It smells so good in here in my kitchen. It smells so good. <laughs> Have you liked this video yet? If you've not, please do so now. <laughs> now, one thing I didn't tell you before is, kose, fine kose, you have to be careful with the temperature of your oil. If it's too hot, it doesn't cook through. If it's not hot, or if, if the temperature is too low, your kose becomes soggy. So it has to be between low and medium your heat should be between low medium medium heat kose is ready on a dry paper towel i'll put my kose on just to drain the oil excess oil from it mm, look at that i can't wait to dig in though i'll repeat the same process let's have a look again once more time Once again, do not overcrowd it and do not keep your oil too hot. Otherwise, as I said, the outer layer will be cooked and brown, but it will not be cooked inside. Now let's flip it over. Wow, have you seen that? How easy that was? Flip it again. Just make sure the other side is a little bit more brown. And I like the crust around. This is the best part. This is the part that I love. The crust around it. Your cursor is ready to check if it's cooked. I've opened one. You can see it from inside. It's all well cooked. Serve your kose with your poplar hausa koko. Or you can have it as, as a snack on its own. Please make sure you subscribe like this video and share with your family and friends have you seen my previous video of tozafi and ayoyo soup if not i will share the link in the description box below please do make sure you go and watch it it's very detailed and it's mommy's recipe thank you for watching hope to see you again next time bye